Hi, we're going to start factoring by finding the GCF. What that means is we're going to break down this term and this term and this term and find out what numbers they have and letters they have in common. So 110x to the fifth breaks down into 2 times 5 times 11 times x times x times x times x times x. And 70x to the 6th breaks down into 2 times 5 times 7 times x times x times x times x times x times x. And 60x to the 7th breaks down into 2 times 3 times 2 times 5. And then I'm going to say 7x's, right? I'm going to write down 7x's because 7x's are all multiplied together. Now look, each of these terms contains a 2. Each of these terms contains a 5. And each of these terms contains 5x's multiplied together. And so that becomes our GCF, our greatest common factor. 2 times 5 times x to the fifth because there are five x's multiplied together. And since two times five is 10, our GCF is going to be 10 x to the fifth. This is going to be very important to you. To see the commonalities in different situations is certainly something that you can use in real life. Let's move on. Write the following in factored form by factoring out the greatest common factor. Okay, 12b to the fourth breaks down into 2 times 2 times 3 times b times b times b times b. And 30b squared breaks down into 2 times 3 times 5 times b times b. Now we have to find what terms, uh, what numbers and letters are in both terms at the same time. Well, each term contains a 2. Each term contains a 3. And each term contains a b. And each term contains another b. So that's our greatest common factor. Now the way that we are going to factor this is, first we name what the common factor is. It's going to be 2 times 3, which is 6, times b times b, which is b squared. And the way that we'll write the answer will be GCF in front of the parentheses and then the leftovers inside the parentheses. So our GCF is 6B squared. And what's left inside is a 2, a 2 and 2Bs two in the first term and a 5 in the second term. And this is the factored form of this. Okay, let's move on. Now we're going to factor by grouping. You factor by grouping when you have four terms. You put parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the second two terms, and there must be a plus sign in the middle. Then you break down each term into its components.
because I'm going to factor this first set of parentheses by GCF, notice that both of these terms contain a V, so I pull it out to the front as a GCF, and I write the leftovers. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the second set of parentheses. 45 breaks down into 9 times 5. So I can see that both of these terms include a 9 and a cube, which becomes my GCF. I write it in front. And then in parentheses, I write the leftovers, a V plus a 5. Now we're going to have to write the answer up here because I ran out of room. The first thing you do is write what's in parentheses once, the, the leftovers, V plus 5, and then you write what's in blue, V plus 9Q. And that's your answer. This v squared plus 5v plus 9vq plus 45q actually breaks down into v plus 5 times v plus 9q. And if you FOIL those together, you'll get back your original problem. Now, we're going to deal with a harder situation. We're going to factor by grouping, but I want you to notice that you are not allowed to have a minus sign in the middle. So we put parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the second two terms, and write a plus sign in the middle. Now we're going to factor the first two terms by GCF. 9 breaks down into 3 times 3 and m cubed breaks down into m times m times m. m squared breaks down into m times m. And p squared breaks down into p times p. But there are no p's in the first term. Both terms contain a 3, and both terms contain 2m. So that will be my GCF, 3m squared. Now, I move over to the other side where I have to do something a little more complicated. Look at this. Look what happens now. That plus sign has to be factored into a negative 1 times negative 1 because I have a negative 1 there. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So I haven't changed anything, but now notice that I have a negative 1 in both terms, and I have a p in both terms. Those will become my GCFs. Over here at the beginning, I have 3m squared in both terms, and the leftovers are going to be 3m minus p squared. Now I write my plus sign, and I write the GCF here, which is negative 1 times p, and then in the parentheses I write what's left. 3m <coughs> minus p squared, because negative 1 Negative 1 times p squared is negative p squared, minus p squared. So now I have 3m minus p squared in both sets of parentheses. I write that down, and then I write the leftovers, 3m squared minus p. Whenever you have 
two minus signs, you're going to have to do this little trick, and that can be pretty darn tricky. But here's your answer, 3 minus p squared times 3m squared minus p. Okay, we're going to talk a whole lot more about this situation right here because it is more difficult.